And now to those Iran nuclear negotiations. We heard from Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu last night, who said the West is giving up potential presidential candidate Chris Christie says the deal could trigger a Middle East nuclear arms race. Now it seems clear that Congress will get a say in whether the agreement goes through one way or another, but would they really be able to block it? Joining me now, Wyoming Republican Senator John Barrasso, a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, what a pleasure to see you. Thanks for having me. So what is the realistic possibility that opponents could, could get enough votes to really stop that if indeed they decide to do it? Well, we have to see what's actually in the final agreement. I've looked at the framework, and from what I know of that, I have concerns about the fact that the centrifuges will all stay there, that some of the facilities, including the secret facility, will remain open, and that research and development will continue. But the concern is Iran with a nuclear weapon, which makes the entire world less safe, less secure, less stable. That is the concern, and that's what I'm going to look for in the final deal. So, so Senator, in that final deal, what are some of the things that you think have to be in it and that, you know, you know, in, in all negotiations, you don't always get what you want. You get some of what you want and the other guys get some of what they want. What, what is it that specifically you think, after seeing what you've seen, you think is fundamental that must be in it that isn't? Well, it has to be verifiable, it has to be enforceable, there has to be accountability. And remember, this legislation that the president has yielded on is bipartisan legislation. I believe that the president has now agreed to sign this because he knew he would have been overridden had he chosen to veto it. This is something that we've put together in a bipartisan way all the way through to say that the president should come to the elected representatives of the people of the United States before going to the Security Council of the United Nations. So are you looking for an up and down vote on the entire thing uh, after, uh, you know, the 30th of June? Is that what you, you think that the, the role of Congress should be, an, a complete up and down vote on it? Well, it's going to be an up and down vote or basically a resolution of disapproval, but it has to do with the money. It has to do with the sanctions that Congress, in a bipartisan way, have put on the Iranian government. And it, to me, that is what has actually driven the Iranians to the negotiating table in the first place, sanctions put on by Congress. And Iran, they want the money. They want sanction relief so that they can then do trade, the shipping can be increased, they can export oil and sell that, that assets that have been frozen, they want the money. Now, of course, I have concerns they're going to use that money for terrorism. We've seen them do that with, with Hamas, with Hezbollah, with the Houthis. I think those are the concerns across the world with Iran having more money, more strength, more force, and potentially a nuclear weapon as well. Senator, I want to switch topics ask you about Loretta Lynch. It's been more than five months since her nomination. According to a recent article in the L.A. Times, the Justice Department is in limbo as it waits for a decision. Uh, how do you see things? I mean, why the delay? Well, there's been a delay because of the trafficking bill that we're voting on at 11 o'clock this morning in the Senate. And uh, we are then going to move from that to the Loretta Lynch nomination. I've met with her in the past. It was a very cordial relationship. Mm -hmm. I know that a number of Republicans have significant concerns, as do I, about her saying that the president's actions on immigration, his executive amnesty, her saying that that's legal, and I just don't think that it is, so I'm not able to actually but support her nomination and plan to vote against her. Senator, I mean, is there any official that the president puts forth on that position or any other that would disagree with an act that the president has taken? It just doesn't seem logical that you would ask someone who the president has chosen, well, what, disagree with the president on, on these issues. Well, you know, I've voted for a number of the president's nominees for other positions, mm -hmm. including Health and Human Service, uh, Sylvia Burwell, uh, with specifically with the attorney general's nomination. Uh, this has been a big issue. Uh, the courts have ruled that the president uh, has acted in a way that is not legal. And you would expect an attorney general and want an attorney general to be the attorney general for the people of the United States, not just somebody there to protect the president from things that he wants to do. Senator John Brasso, thank you for being with me. Appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.